stampers. My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this card. Recently in my demonstrator group we were given a color challenge um, and this is the result of my color challenge. We were asked to use Pool Party, Night of Navy, Calypso Coral, and Tranquil Tide to create a card. And this is what I came up with. So let me tell you what you're going to need to make this card and I'll show you exactly what I did to do it. The only thing I'm going to change this time is I put a piece of Pool Party behind this and I think I'm going to switch over to a piece of Tranquil Tide. So we need a piece of Tranquil Tide that is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. We need two pieces of Whisper White, uh, one larger, four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and one that is five and a quarter by four, uh, four inches. Then we need a panel of uh, watercolor paper um, and I cut this one a little bit bigger than I need but then I want to be able to trim it down so this is four by five and a quarter and then I have a piece of scrap of watercolor paper and then I also have a couple of pieces of whisper white um, that are scrap for cutting out my flowers and my leaves here. Uh, the stamp set that I use to make this is um, the Daisy Delight stamp set. And this little flower here is one of the ones I'm using. And this little outline, both of these are two-step stamping to create um, an image of a smaller daisy. But I'm just using the outline stamps today for both the daisy and the leaf here in, in this. Um, um, and I've done it again. I can't remember what the, um, the name of the thank you stamp is or what the stamp set it comes from. Um, it's not the Delightful Daisy because that one's actually quite large. Um, and so I'll make sure I get it on the screen and down below for you. <clears throat> so let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to burnish our card base here and get that nice and burnished and then uh, I think I will go ahead and adhere my larger piece of Whisper White onto the front of the card base here and I'm just going to use Snail for that. Um, so. nail to just adhere that piece of cardstock down on the front of my card base here. And then we can go ahead and just set that aside for the moment until we're ready to assemble. The majority of the work we're going to do is to um, use the stamps that are in here and Again, it's this little stamp here of the daisy and this little stamp here of the leaf. And grab a couple of little blocks here, put these stamps on. And the first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and color my watercolor panel. And I've got some scratch paper here to put down to do that and some paper towel. I've got my spritzer and I've got my aqua pen. And what I'm going to do is put down some of the color from the stamp sets here into the lids of all of these inks. See, this one I also need to do. And there we go. All right. So 
and I think the edges of those stamp sets are uh, ink pads are on the on camera. So the first thing I'm going to do is spritz my watercolor paper piece here and just um, move some of that water around on the piece of watercolor paper. Then I'm going to um, take some water and just lay it into the lids of all of these uh, ink colors here. And I'm going to start with um, the Knight of Navy. And I'm going to water the Knight of Navy down quite a bit because it's such a dark color. And I don't want it to, um, in fact, I'm going to blot a little bit of this water off of my card here. And I'm just going to do this a third, a third, and a third. So I'm going to take this Knight of Navy wash, if you will, watercolor wash here, and put some of that color down here on my card. And it doesn't have to be even. This is just getting the color down. Nothing special about this process at all. Um, I, I like having both light and dark areas. Um, so there we go. Now I'm going to rinse off or wash off my watercolor uh, pen here. And I'm going to go next for the um, pool party. And pool party is a very light color. So you have to get quite a bit of ink. And in fact, if I remember right, when I did this card, I ended up resorting to using a little bit of the reinker to get enough color down. And it's fine to blend the colors back into one another. I think it makes for some interesting looking uh, there, I've got a little bit of the color. And you'll see I've got a little bit of a dark streak there, and frankly, that doesn't bother me at all. I kind of kind of like that. Maybe I'll wash it out just a little. And I want to make sure I get some watercolor wash all the way to the ends of my paper. Okay, now, the last color that I'm going to use and I'll rinse off my brush again. This actually is pretty fast as one of these kinds of cards goes. I'm going into the Tranquil Tide and that color difference is pretty subtle. Um, it's almost, um, in this case, um, well, there's a little bit more color. There we go, get a little bit more color saturation in there. And you can see it blends beautifully with the pool party. Okay, now while I'm at it, I am going to take that little strip of scrap that I had of the watercolor paper, and I'm just gonna lay a little bit of the color down here on this little strip. And that's where I'm going to take my sentiment from, and I want it to have a couple of streaks of color in it um, to um, give a little bit of interest and to make our little uh, oval piece here with our sentiment. Okay, so what I'm going to have to you, it, do is use my heat tool to dry this. So I'll quiet the video and heat this up to dry it. Okay. So there I have my piece mostly dry. And isn't that interesting? What see what the Navy Knight of Navy does? It it's got almost purple elements in it. Isn't that pretty? And so that is um, the 
these two pieces for what we're going to do for the sentiment and for the wash and I'm just going to set those aside and let them continue to dry. Then I'm going to take some of my scrap pieces of white. Let me just take one of those and I am going to take my little stamp here and some Versamark ink and I'm going to use my my embossing buddy here to get this panel good and prepared. Then I am going to use my Versamark to put down several of the daisies. The way I constructed this card, I need, uh, I think it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the daisies here um, and five of the leaves. And so just because everything doesn't always work out perfectly here, I'm going to lay down a couple of rows of these daisies, which gives me the option to do add more if I think I need them or whatever. Okay, then at the same time I'm going to take my leaf pattern and add that just below here. And again, I think I only need five of these, but true to form, I will probably make several more than I need just to make sure I have enough and this is one of those kinds of cards, as long as you're doing it, if you're going to make several cards, you might as well go ahead and make the extra pieces uh, again while you're at it so that you end up with enough pieces to make a couple cards. Okay, so I've got my Versamark down there. And what I'm going to do is use clear embossing powder and sprinkle that on my images here and I know this is hard to see on camera but trust me in real life you can see both the images that you've stamped and the effect of the powder on the embossing and I'll tilt that a little bit in the light and I hope you can see some of those images okay so um, let me put my powder back here in my little pot and bring out my heat tool again and heat these images. Okay, there's all of my images heat embossed on the piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is go back to using watercolor washes. So with, um, let's see, let me clean off my brush here a little bit so I don't get my inks mixed. Okay, so now I've got some Calypso Coral on here. And what I'm going to do is just wash across these images, and I am using Thick Whisper White uh, to, to do this stamping on. And as you can see, there's no precision to this at all. It is just getting the color down. And um, some will be lighter, some will be darker. I think that only adds to the interest of your card. Um, and I want to make sure I get some of this wash on everything. All right, now I'm going to clean off my brush again, and I'm going to move to Tranquil Tide to get down the color on my leaves. And again, there's no precision in this. It's just getting the color down on the images of the leaves. Again, 
some lighter and some darker. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside to dry so that uh, we can move on with what needs to be done here. A couple of pieces here that I have already done and I'm just going to demonstrate for you a little bit of the fussy cutting. This one isn't very challenging at all because the bottom of this flower is basically flat. And other than making a few dips around some of the flowers here, you see this area that has two petals? I'm literally going to just go across it and take an indent out of the next one. The same thing with the next two petals. Uh, and then the same thing with the last three. And then only showing the major indents makes this piece of fussy cutting actually quite simple. So that's what I did with the flower. And the leaf itself is also very, very simple. Um, just kind of around the edges. And I did let the color go around the clear embossing. And I'm not fussy cutting right to the clear embossing. I'm leaving an edge of color around. So there is a fussy cut leaf and a flower. And you saw how much time it took me to do that. Almost no time at all. So now I've done a few more ahead of time so that we wouldn't have to wait to watch me fussy cut. <laughs> so I've got a few flowers and a few pieces cut here. Now, here's my piece of watercolor paper, and it's actually pretty dry. Um, you saw the paper warp as I went back and forth, and the trick is just keeping the paper going, uh, turning it over and over until you get as flat as you're going to get drying it and then manipulating the shape back once the paper is dry to something that's reasonably flat. Now, I'm going to take our card base. Okay, so here we have our piece. And what I did, I'll bring back the card so you can see what I've done here. Um, and I don't know if you can see on here, I'll bring it up to the camera. There's actually quite a bit of glitter or sparkles on the face of this card, and I'll show you here in a second what I did to achieve that. Um, what I did was I used just snail um, on my leaves. So okay. And what I did on this panel was I put one leaf sort of, oops, that's kind of backwards, isn't it? Yeah, I want that leaf point sticking out in the stem down. Then I took the second leaf and I put it going mostly up into this corner. And basically I just put them so that they fanned out uh, into uh, a quadrant kind of shape here. So there they are. Okay, so what I'm going to do you is use dimensionals on these daisies. And I'm going to put regular size dimensionals on two of these and place one facing this part of the card and using a second one facing, facing the other opposite direction on the card. And I put those bases pretty near one another. Then on the rest of these, what I did was just use snail and I added one here towards the top one further out to the side here. These I did raise these and put them here. This time I put them here so it changes the dynamic a little bit of the flower arrangement. 
um, but you can put this together so that you get flowers uh, that please your eye to, uh, to make the configuration here. So there we have, I think, a rather pleasant configuration of those flowers. The next thing I did was using my circle or oval die, I used a piece of scrap, that scrap that we made that had the, um, the watercolor wash on it. And I, that's, I believe, the smallest of the ovals. Whatever fits whatever sentiment you'd like to have on your card is perfectly appropriate. And what I did was I put a couple of dimensionals to raise this piece and place it here along the bottom. And I took my last leaf, and in this case, I did trim the bottom of this leaf off um, because I didn't want it sticking out too far, and laid that leaf down there. And I did the same thing with this um, flower to tuck it underneath here and tie those things together. Now, um, let me move on to embellishments. And I did take some dazzling diamonds. I mean, not dazzling diamonds, but rhinestones. I'm still working off of the old uh, configuration of rhinestones. <laughs> I've got a little ways to go. I had quite an accumulation of the others. Okay, and so to kind of finish this, I put a rhinestone in each of the centers of these little daisies. Okay, so there I have the basic design of this piece completed. Now, I realized that I forgot to cut this panel down. So, I'm going to have to see if I can pull that off by sliding the end in here. I'm going to try and take a quarter of an inch off of this side. There we go. And a quarter of an inch off the bottom here. As I often say, you be smarter than me and cut down your panel after you've colored it so that you have that done. All right, now let's see how this comes together. Here's my card base, all ready to go. And this piece now is cut to size to fit inside here. And because it's watercolor paper and um, it's warped a, a bit, I'm going to use Fuse to um, secure this panel in place. Very good. Now, we had that other piece of white um, that we cut to five and a quarter, I believe, by Four, yes, and what I'm going to do is um, use my daisy stamp that we use to uh, do our watercolor daisies and some of the coral ink and Calypso coral. This is for the inside of the of the card. And what I'm going to do is just float a few of those daisies in Calypso Coral up the side here and then take a little bit of the Tranquil Tide um, to add a leaf or two. And because the Tranquil Tide is so... Um, strong as a color, I'm going to stamp off once and then add the leaf pattern 
here on the bottom and just light relief. I think that's enough. It just gives the hint and pulls the front of the card through to the inside of the card. So now what we're going to do is just add this piece to the inside of the card with a little snail. And that is our project for today. And it was very interesting and um, to think about, there's something about challenges that are kind of fun, um, and that is to take something that somebody has predetermined for you and then force your creativity into something that works that becomes a cohesive piece um, that you can uh, use in your, in your cart. One more little piece to show you here. Let me grab a couple pieces of scratch paper here and lay this down here and show you how I got the sparkles on the front of here. It's kind of a fun technique, and that is to take your Wink of Stella pen, and rather than putting Wink of Stella all over, to just flick some of the sparkles from your Wink of Stella pen and just flick to get some of these sparkles. And if you do it at the end like this, then you get sparkles on your flowers, you get sparkles on your sentiment, and sparkles on your card base in a pretty random pattern. And at first it doesn't even feel like you're getting much on here, but you'd be surprised. In fact, I think I'll switch to another pen because I think that one is sort of reached its end. There we go. And see how much this has got in it. Okay, so now I have one that is quite juicy. <laughs> and I'm going to just flick some of this Wink of Stella all over this card. Then I'll raise it so you can see what the effect is. And after it dries, you'll see that you have way more on here than you think you do, typically. All right, so there, I think I'm done. And I'll just raise this up so that you can see, and you, you might be able to see, of course, that's still a little damp, but all of the various sparkles that you have on the face of that card. And I think it adds so much to the finish on this card. And um, that's it. There is the project for today. And I think they're just lovely. And I have to say that when I was first given the challenge of using Night of Navy, Calypso Coral, Pool Party, and Tranquil Tide together, I was a bit stymied, but started working through the idea of what I might be able to do, and I think it's just a lovely little card. Um, so uh, thanks so much for stopping by and watching my YouTube channel today. I do appreciate it. Uh, everything that you see here can be purchased on my 24-7 shop, www.lbedinger.stampinup.net. And uh, let's see. Um, if you don't want to miss videos, it's good to subscribe to my channel and be, feel free to share this video with others. Let's see, the prize draw for November are four sets of two each of the new Stampin' Blends alcohol markers plus the ivory, the bronze, and the color lifter. So it's 11 of the markers, which is about a $49 value, I think. And the prize draw for the month of October was the Soft Sayings Kit, and the winner was Darlene Fox. So congratulations, Darlene. And um, 
So um, that is what I have for you today, and I'll be back soon with more cards and more projects. Bye!